this is our second talk from the second session about Fedora Community Outreach Revamp. And I would like to welcome Marai Nabala, uh, Marie Nordin, and Sumantro Mukherjee uh, for this live panel. And yeah, uh, take over. Over to you. Thanks, sir. Yeah. Um, not sure where Sumantro is. I'm sure he'll join us shortly. Um, we decided to do our session live today so that we could interact with folks as we're going through. And also we've done it a couple times, so we're ready. Um, also, just make sure to add any questions under the Q&A tab, and we'll make sure to get to them at the end of our session. So I am Marie Norden. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. That was a long Community Forge title for Community Manager, Architect, Support Person. Um, and I've been involved in Fedora since 2013. I actually started with an outreach internship. And I stepped into this role right at the end of 2019, so right before COVID began. And, and I've been in the role ever since. So I'll, I'll give it over to Mariana to introduce. Hi, everybody. I am glad to be at DevConf US. This is the very first time DevConf US I attend. Uh, my name is Mariana. I am a Fedora contributor since 20, 2016. As my day job, I am a product owner for PHPList, which is an open source email marketing solution. Uh, besides the Fedora project, I really enjoy contributing to several other open source projects. And I am also a member of a local uh, open source community in my city. Cool. Thanks for that. So, Sumantra is going to start us off. I think he might be having some kind of emergency. I just messaged him. So, we're going to do our best. <laughs> through through his section. So, Mariana, do you want to just go ahead with the slide here? Um, yeah, so the thing is that we have both the Fedora Linux, the operating system and the Fedora community. And certainly our presentation, our initiative with the revamp has always been around the Fedora community. The Fedora community is a global community of people, which means that it is a very diverse community consisted of um, People have come in from different countries, different areas of the world, uh, speaking certain different languages, different ages, backgrounds, etc., etc. Uh, hi, Sumatra. I'm glad hi. you joined. Yeah. Would you like to start with a brief introduction of yourself? Right. You just started, actually. Sure. So, uh, sorry for being late. I'm Sumatra. I work as a part of the QA team and. I've been in Fedora Council and currently leading this effort for uh, community revamp. Um, I usually host test days and the rest of the other events. You can find me in Fedora Join, and you know we can talk about more if you have interest in contributing to Fedora. So, having said that, um, since Mariana has uh, started off the slide, I would just go ahead and add a few things. Fedora is a very welcoming community, and we are pretty much globally spread out, which means we have about um, 4,000 4, odd contributors going across the globe. And that's a very diverse way that we, uh, you know, we extend the project. We try to be more user focused, or rather, we deliver solutions which run on your laptop, servers, cloud, containers, everywhere you name it. And those are most user focused solutions. And back to Mariana, you can take over the last one. Yep. So the Fedora Linux uh, operating system is certainly a user focused uh, operating system. Uh, the very short release cycle of only six months aims to bring the latest technologies and the latest updates of uh, any software that the open source community out there prepares. Uh, also, there are different Fedora flavors which are meant to suit the needs of different Fedora users, different end uh, users. Uh, my favorite one is the Neuro Fedora, which is suitable for um, scientists and people that do research in certain um, in different areas. When it comes to the four foundations, friends, features, freedom first, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, we are uh, a community of people from all around the globe. 
and making the the community and the software available and accessible to everybody one thing that we aim to do is actually um, translate and bring the software but also ask Fedora which is a community forum where people go and ask questions and there are sections in different languages where people can ask um, and also reply in other languages besides English. Uh, so Mantra, I want to go ahead for the next slide or Marie? Sure. Okay. Right. I have the next slide. So, right. So what are we here talking about today? We're talking about uh, Fedora's community outreach and just want to give folks a little bit of history on uh, the ambassador program and some of the other teams that have kind of popped up as uh, the years have gone by. So what is the Fedora Ambassador Program? It's a 15 plus year long program focused on ensuring that the public understands Fedora and the work that we're doing. Also to help uh, to grow the contributor base and to be a liaison between Fedora and other uh, free and open source software communities. So um, what are the join SIG advocates and comops teams, right? So uh, these are kind of all other outreach teams that have grown up over time. So we have the join SIG, that's specifically for newcomers, complete newcomers to our community. And this is a chat room for folks to um, join and kind of have uh, some guidance about where they might contribute in Fedora. So they open up a ticket for that person and kind of work on welcoming and helping them explore the community. Advocates are folks that run events, but aren't necessarily part of a bigger team or program. They basically just request budget and run that event. The Com Ops team is short for community operations. And historically, they've focused on tools, resources, um, analytics and, you know, improving communication between the teams and basically internal outreach. So we have all these kinds of different teams, um, but how did we get to the community outreach revamp, right? So over the years, there was a lot of different things that came up. Um, the program really grew without scaling. So the documentation wasn't necessarily sustainable for the team, there was confusion about how to become an ambassador or become what's the difference between join an ambassador or advocates. Um, there was also a burnout. There was folks who had been doing ambassador and outreach work for Fedora for many, many years, but because we weren't onboarding new people, we know what that leads to, burnout. There was also, um, some changes in how things were operating. Uh, we had um, external budgets, sort of. So we had these local budgets that our local ambassadors were managing and we had to change that process. Wasn't really something we had a choice in. So adapting to that didn't really go so well. Um, there was a lot of empowerment with, with that having that control over that budget. So changing the way that operated confused things a lot and made people feel like they weren't even sure why they were doing this. Um, and we also had a shortage of mentors and people who had the capacity to bring people on. Um, so we had all these kinds of different pieces piling up of reasons that, you know, inactivity was happening. So I came in on, came into this role in 2019 and um, I actually like avoided the topic for a little bit, getting myself comfortable. <laughs> I knew it was this kind of longstanding thing, but I came up with a proposal to revamp um, Fedora's community outreach. And I was inspired by a book that I read, Switch, How to Change When Change is Hard. And it really just gives you yet another um, formula for making change happen, but it was enough to inspire me to kind of make this plan, which was really what we needed. So I made the plan, I wrote it up, I proposed it to the community, and we worked together to make reviews, edits, changes based on what the community felt. Um, you know, we had, so for example, we included the join Zagan, and it turns out that 
they are happy doing their job and they're functioning really well the way that they are. They don't want to be more involved. It's a low effort type of group. So we kind of, we took these sort of pieces of feedback and put it into our proposal. Um, and from there, our Mindshare committee approved it. Uh, at that point, we, yep. At that point, we looked for co-leads and we just invited, I think, four or five different people who we thought would be a really good fit. Um, and two of those folks were Sumatra and Mariana, and they said that they were able to commit to working on this project and have the interest and the excitement. So Mariana and Sumatra became our co-leads for this revamp. And I'm basically their, I guess the third co-lead or a support person. I'm like their project manager. Um, so, so the three of us are the main team that work on this. So I am going to hand it over to Mariana to talk about some of the steps we've taken. Yeah. So as Marie mentioned, once our small team was formed, we started working on uh, separate pieces. Uh, the team was formed in late July, 2020. It's been a year now. Uh, and the very first thing that we did was actually try to have a structure of the tasks that we were going to work on in the future. We created a Trello board, which later on was retired. Uh, we added there some of the some pieces that we thought we might be in, um, of use and interesting to work on uh, in the upcoming months. The Trello board was uh, later on retired because we realized that did not attract uh, much attention from the community members. It's there for archive purposes, but it's no longer maintained. Uh, instead of the Trello board, now we have a HackMD file, a public HackMD file where we store all, all um, our notes from every meeting that we have in order to make sure that we keep track of everything that goes on. Uh, initially, we presented the, the initiative of the, of the community with several calls that we had, both video calls, but also some uh, IRC meetings. And then we started working on specific uh, uh, topics. The very first one was the ambassadors group cleanup where we ran a script and we came up with a list of people that had not used their fast account, which is a, the account that we have as Fedora contributors uh, for the past six months. So we did that in November 2020 and going back six months, we reached out to this group of people. We told them about the revamp. We told them that they are going to be moved to the emeritus group. And if they wanted to come back, they were more than welcomed. And indeed, we hear back from some of these people. The next thing that we worked on was to uh, prepare a community outreach survey. We came up with a list of questions and built a survey. Uh, our aim in this case was to um, identify what were some of the pain points of the community when it comes to organizing events or actually contributing and being part of the community. The most interesting outcome from this survey was that we realized that people love to self-organize and not share much details with the Mindshare community, a committee, sorry, or any other group within the Fedora project. This means that there is a lot of Fedora activity out there that we're not aware of, which is both good and bad because that way we cannot uh, measure much the engagement of the community. Next thing we did on, similar to the survey, we prepared a list of questions for the Mindshare community members. So the Mindshare committee is uh, made of people that come from different groups within the federal community and together they meet every week and discuss um, things that are ongoing within the community. Again, the idea here was to see what are their suggestions or something they would like to change and see what we, how we can fix that. The next thing was uh, becoming a Fedora objective. So the Fedora project has some uh, objectives, some milestones, you can call them, which are long-term projects, if that's a correct word. Uh, most Usually they are technical things to work on, but not necessarily. So our um, uh, revamp was not technical, but we became an objective. Uh, which uh, is meant to end in a few months from now. The next thing, as members of the Fedora Council, 
we helped uh, edit and uh, prepare some questions for the community engagement survey, which was a survey that the council is going to be launching every year. Uh, this happened in June, two months ago, uh, where um, the council wanted to see how both uh, technical and non-technical contributors feel about the project and also the, the operating system itself. Our ongoing uh, project and ongoing thing are the role handbooks and the documentation. Uh, we worked on that a lot on a live session uh, during NEST. 2021, which is the Fedora Contributors Conference. Uh, so Mantra will give more details on that a little early, uh, later. Um, so the thing is that we are going to launch this thing in a few months, but we want to make sure that the documentation is there for anyone that will read it uh, in the future or for people who are currently ambassadors and contributors and want to see that uh, what we're changing and why and how things will uh, work from now on. And everything will be based on the feedback that we have collected in the past months. Uh, the important thing, oh, can I have one more thing back on the previous slide? Either way. Uh, the important thing here is to have clear documentation and constantly communicating with the community and uh, not deciding anything how we think it should be, but it should be based on the community's needs. And the way we do that is by having public notes for everybody, by posting, hopefully, uh, community blog updates. Uh, this is supposed to be happening monthly, but uh, we have been quite busy because we have been presenting in several events in the past months. We have been at the Fedora Linux 33 and 34 release parties, NEST 20, uh, 20 and 2021, DevCon CZ and the Open Source Conference. And we also had a large um, the session that I mentioned at NEST, where we constantly try to share with the community what we're doing and ask for their help and their feedback. Now you can change. I kept trying to go back and I clicked and it just kept bringing me further and further forward. That was funny. Okay, so. Uh, another exciting part of the revamp has been um, an outreachy intern. So we had an outreachy intern for the summer session, um, and I mentored that intern in graphic design. So the project was to develop and design assets for the Fedora Community Outreach Revamp. So uh, uh, our intern was Daria Chowdhury, and she made so many things. She did an amazing job. She went honestly above and beyond what we had set out for her and it was a really successful internship she also grew as a designer and in her confidence and and you know kind of comfortability in the fedora project so overall it was an amazing internship and out of that we got updated logos because we have a new fedora logo so we got updated logos for the various teams we have worked on um sticker sheets, these things called Fedora Cheat Cubes. We have these how to join Fedora handouts um, that are printable or online versions. Um, we're working on, oh, we, she also worked on getting translations of those. I think she did a team, a poster design that actually isn't quite out yet. Um, and she also designed something called the Fedora Museum, which isn't on the slide, gotta add it on here but it's a really cool work adventure platform that's pretty much for Fedora moving forward. And it's a customized 8-bit kind of adventure map for people to socialize on. So that's gonna be a huge, uh, basically asset for the Fedora community meeting virtually for the time being, for the foreseen future basically, um, to interact in kind of a, a, a more fun way. So that internship was a huge success. Sumantra? So yeah, so continuing with the state of improvement, we have this year, we had NEST, which is the annual contributor conference that Fedora has, which used to be flock, but then with COVID we have NEST now. And during NEST, we planned this 
two hour talk sprint where we invited folks over to write out documentation which should actually fit into docs.federalproject.org. So that's the home for all the documentation that we're trying to build in. And uh, successfully, we had committed about 30 odd Google Bests. And um, you know, huge shout out to Justin and all the other folks who contributed to make this possible. We initialized all the pages, including the ambassadors, the new ambassadors page, the ambassadors emirates page, and what's the process gonna look like. We redirected some of the old wiki pages which were no longer relevant. We chucked them out and we transferred all the new links back to the docs pages where they should be up right now. And in the coming months, the idea here is to feed the entire documentation in its own place and then put those all, all the and then wipe out all the wiki pages which are no longer relevant to the answer which we have. So that's that was the motive of the doc sprint which we kind of accomplished with the last uh, doc sprint and going forward to we'll be seeing more improvement in terms of documentation and access. So yeah, um, this is interesting. So all this effort that we have been trying to do with the help of community has boiled down the success metrics to a couple of very strict words. And I am here going to explain some of them in a bit more details. So sustainability is has been the core issue that we have been trying to uh, you know, win over for since this revamp started. So scale the program at a scale was was one of the very hard things to do and we figured out that we are not the only community who has been trained who are facing this issue. There's a lot of other communities who are and we want to be a reference model to other communities as we go by and bring the entire revamp to a completion. We want to actually bring this down to a reference model which other communities can use and bring them to somewhat like a federal atmosphere. More importantly, to make that sustainability goal a success, we wanted to focus on bringing something called role handbooks into the picture, which are somewhat like uh, describing the exact identity of every outreach team and what they're supposed to do. And this is going to be helped or uh, rather powered by this, the outreach internship which happened, which in turn was supposed to be multiple language translations of the same role handbooks, which then would be spread out to the global community for more and more empowerment of individual teams. Coming to individuals and empowerment, that's the third point. And it, it finally boils down to reinforcing some of these identities that we have been missing back to the teams which they came from. Like for example, if someone were to do a lot of marketing and design, they would have to work together with the marketing design team in unison. And to empower that, we kind of wanted to make sure we get all those teams some kind of you know onboarding guide, some kind of help with translations in terms of what is the long-term strategy going to look like for them. And this bringing to long-term strategy there is a, there was a sheer need for us to kind of run polls, interviews, and whatever we could to understand, or rather grow an awareness between contributors and the existing community outside that we are trying to revamp the entire Amsterdam program. And it was for the benefit for the entire project to participate and gain more and more awareness as we proceed with this program. And we hit that pretty nail pretty hard. We have gotten the awareness kicked in. The, all the meetups that we have been presenting on and with all the guides that we have written, we are getting a lot of people ask questions about, hey, this is good, when are we finally launching? Which is a good success matrix for us and we would want to keep that ball rolling. Uh, bringing back something that was the core fueling part of this entire initiative was recognition. So a lot of folks who kind of stopped contributing we're kind of lacking motivation in terms of recognition um, in the community. And to address that, Marie has a, a long slide in terms of rise, which she's kind of talking about. But in short, we kind of built, the, Marie kind of built on this um, in a success matrix, which basically helps us to now 
you know, fuel all the motivated crowd back to the community, which they, then they can make, uh, you know, they, they, they can put efforts and they can make it better. Finally, uh, coming down to listening feedback. So Mariana pointed this out pretty early, earlier in the slide, which is we always want more and more feedback from people. And we three are just people who do not take decisions of our own. We listen back to community. And the way we do it is we try to actually write our notes on HackMD, publish as many blog posts as we can, work on polls, and get those exact ideas back from community as a part of, as a part of uh, feedback. And then we put that feedback loop back into the program. So it's not like we take any decisions. We actually listen back to feedback and adopt to whatever the new feedback is coming. And that brings us to a new thing. We kind of learned a lot of cool stuff that have been happening in Fedora we have not noticed. One of them was there was a lot of diversity in the communities. There were people who wanted to do events by themselves. Some people wanted help from Mindshare, or some people just wanted to you know, work with the local representatives. We are an open group of people. And we kind of adopt to any of these situations. And we try to support contributors and outreach team members in all the formats we can. Right? And that's exactly what, where we stand right now. We want to actually go ahead with this sustainable community with adaptation to whatever new changes that's coming to the program. So uh, next should be Marie with the recognition. So I do see we are running a little bit short on time. So I'm going to go through this one pretty quickly. Um, and But at the same time, if folks uh, listening have some questions, feel free to drop them now. Hopefully we can answer in the chat or have a minute here at the end. So just a couple follow-up thoughts on all this work that we're doing. Um, we're applying something called RISE to this initiative. So I came up with RISE as uh, basically a framework to think about contributor and community health. So four things that I feel like are really important in building a healthy community of contributors and keeping people happy and satisfied. So recognition. So we're making sure that we have recognition built into this by having badges uh, created for all of the associated teams and making sure to you know, give recognition even to the co-leads here and other people who have been working on our um, revamp with us. So incentive um, badges does uh, tie back into that one, but um, we're still working on this. This is like a really tough one for um, community health and different in general um, support. So providing and creating the right types of assets for our outreach teams to go into the field with. Um, having somewhere to go that people are going to answer if they have questions. Um, these are the types of things that we're making sure are in place. And also empowerment. Um, providing those um, pieces, providing uh, budgetary support, providing swag, um, and just generally giving people the confidence to go out and um, do this type of work. So uh, last but not least, we've seen a shift in attitude from the community. When we first started doing this, when I first put the proposal out, I knew what I was going to get back, which was a barrage of complaints um, and, uh, you know, problems and things that seemed uh, kind of insurmountable, right? So as we've continued to do this work, people are seeing our consistency. People are seeing the things we're working on and producing. Um, we've seen the shift in attitude. Also, the three of us have been, oh, I think we're right at our time, but the three of us have been taking feedback and, and um, sorry, <laughs> got distracted because we hit the time. Um, so we've seen a shift in attitude. People are feeling positive about it. People are like, when are the meetings starting? So we're really excited about this work. And I'd say we're about six months away from like everything, having everything done, including documentation and follow-ups and plans for the different teams to move forward. So thanks again for uh, coming to our talk. I don't think that there's time for questions here. So meet us in the breakout room um, if you're able. Thanks.